So the great thing at Stream Media West is it's larger than we had last year. In a time when the economy is still you know, pretty poor for a lot of companies, there's still a lot of companies here. There's a lot of new companies, which is nice to see. We're seeing a lot about broadband-enabled devices. We had the keynote from Xbox this morning where they're showing 1080p streaming coming to the Xbox for the average consumer. Uh, you know, the average consumer today can get about a 5.5 meg broadband quality stream into their home. So we're seeing a lot about broadband-enabled devices, Roku, TiVo, Blu-ray players, uh, broadband-enabled TVs. But the show is really about how do you create, capture, consume, transcode, store, manage, deliver, and track. The, basically what we call the ecosystem. That's what the show is really about, the entire video ecosystem. The biggest thing we're seeing today in the ecosystem is people aren't talking about QoS all the time. So quality of service used to be the thing everyone talked about. How do you get the bits from point A to point B? Today it's talking about how do you monetize those bits? More importantly, how do you track those bits? Um, monetization is big, but you have to be able to track and show value in that as well. So things like reporting and analytics, very big, always have been in our industry, still continue to be. The other thing is the user interface. We're seeing a lot of talk on the show floor, not just how good is the quality of the video, but how good is that interactive experience around the video? What are the controls and functionality that the player has? What can you do with that video? Can you embed it? Uh, can you do full screen? What type of syndication does it have? What type of viral video um, tools can you use to get that out there? So are you using things like Twitter and Facebook and all those syndication elements? That's probably one of the biggest things that we've seen this year compared to last year. Nobody was talking about Twitter and Facebook. Innovation, I think, comes from the, the users and the creators. But I think initially it has to come from the content owners. The content owners have to provide a service that consumers want to actually be able to use. It has to be simple. It has to be intuitive. Uh, it has to be something that actually consumes them. It can't just be a static video that's playing in a page with no interactive elements. So I think the real adoption we're seeing on the web today with video is as a result of content owners realizing that they have to provide more content on the page than just the video player itself. So really what you're asking about is the enterprise, what we call the enterprise video space. Uh, a good portion of our attendance at the show is always enterprise video and, and like you asked there's a lot of video taking place inside the firewall. Enterprise corporations, Fortune 500 corporations use video every day as a communications tool. So you've, guys, you've got guys here from Lockheed Martin and Intel and BP and Wachovia and Bank of America talking about how they use video every day to communicate to offices all around the world. And that's primarily almost always done inside the firewall. Um, they consume it all inside the firewall, they manage it inside the firewall, and a lot of them have set up little webcast studios to actually deliver this content every single day. It's interesting in that when we talk enterprise video, folks ask if that's growing today. And it is growing, but here's the thing I think they miss. This industry started off from enterprise video. So today everyone talks about Apple and Roku and Netflix and Xbox because those are the cool, sexy things. But there's more video adoption taking place in the enterprise today than there is media and entertainment. 100% of the Fortune 1000 corporations all use audio and video streaming today. Every single day inside their enterprise, every quarter they're doing earnings calls. They're using it for distance learning, training, communications, um, HR resources. So that is absolutely growing. Obviously the enterprise corporations have money to spend. They understand the value. And the big difference is if you're a vendor selling into the enterprise market, you're not walking in there and saying, here's how you monetize your content. So the enterprise guys, they're not trying to insert ads. They're not trying to do anything targeted for the most part. They're really talking about how do I communicate more efficiently and more effectively. Wow, trend, trends are so hard to say because they come and go so fast. You know, the trend for this year is definitely broadband-enabled devices, and that's something we'll hear more about next year. If you think about the number of broadband-enabled TVs and Blu-ray players that are out in the market today, it's very small. There's not a lot of them. When you start adding up the number of Xboxes, PS3s, Roku's, TiVo's, Slings, all these other boxes out there, the numbers start to add up. So this is the trend that we're not just hearing today, we're gonna to hear this trend next year and we're gonna hear it the year after. Because by 2012, there's gonna be enough devices on the market to actually make a real impact. And today the numbers are still very small. I personally, I don't think we need any more boxes. I've got maybe 10 boxes at home and obviously that's more than the, than the average consumer because I test and play with all these boxes for my job. But 
the average consumer doesn't want even two or three boxes. So, you know, the set-top box manufacturers could definitely own this market. So far, they haven't. When we see announcements by Boxy, of, you know, they're coming out with a device as well. I think two years from now, we're going to see a huge shift in the market where a lot of the guys who have boxes today simply won't be around. Some of them haven't even sold six figures worth of units in the market. So from a business perspective, how can you survive with that few, market, uh, that few boxes in the market? The penetration rate has to be higher. Sets by Vizio and Sony come with the ability to import content through that broadband enabled player functionality that they have in the box. So you can get Netflix, you can get Vudu. The problem there is the Consumer Electronics Association says the average consumer holds onto their TV between six and eight years. So how many TVs are going to be sold in the next three years that are broadband enabled? Depends on who you ask. The numbers are obviously you know, higher or lower. But let's say that there's even seven, eight, 10 million TVs in North America sold in the next three or four years that are broadband enabled. That's still actually a very small number because then what percentage of that 10 million is actually used to consume content the way the TV manufacturer intended? I think that's a valid question. Why is everyone obsessed with making a box? I don't think you need to. Uh, you know, the Netflix model of taking their software and putting it on all these boxes, it's a smart idea. The problem with that is we have yet to see how Netflix is going to make money for this because the cost to license the content and distribute the content is still very high. And Netflix today isn't offering any digital-only package. If Netflix was just in the business today of doing digital delivery of movies, they'd be out of business. They wouldn't be able to afford to license the movies and deliver them and still make money. So they're a, you know, an interesting example simply because they're making the vast majority of their money still from the plain old DVD rentals. So they're adding things like streaming into that because they want to keep their churn down. They want to provide more value at that $8.95 a month and up package. So it's smart of them, but they're also spending almost $100 million this year in licensing costs and delivery costs for their streaming offering.